Hello everyone. Welcome to Urogynecology for Beginners. I am Dr. Pranadeep Reddy. I am Dr. Ala Monika. Today, today we are going to discuss about the remaining three of nine urogynecology spaces which we were discussing before. Uh, those three spaces are? Pectineal space, yeah. rectovaginal space and uterosacral space. Yes. And these three are little small so we want to finish in a single session. Uh, so let's go on. So the first one will be a pectineal space. So how you want to describe with the pectineal space, Monica? So we'll be uh, taking the help of our own Mia model for yeah, this yeah. Miyazaki model. Yeah, for the benefit of our viewers, we have removed the bladder here so that we can see retropubic area clearly, and the pectineal ligament also we can show it a better way. Yes, sir. So before the pectineal ligament, I'll tell about two other ligaments, sir, which mm -hmm. are popularly known. Yeah. One is inguinal ligament, which extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. So, this is inguinal ligament, sir. Medially, there will be a lacunar ligament from the pubic tubercle, posterior medial as posterior lateral aspect, there will be a lacunar yes. ligament. From that lacunar ligament, it will be a broad shaped ligament, sir, broad ligament, yeah. which will be covering the iliopectineal line and the superior, superior pubic ramus. Okay. So, when it is covering, it is thickest in the medial part and as it goes laterally, it will be thinned out. Why we are talking about this space and what is its significance? Yes sir, its significance for urogynecology perspective, it cannot be uh, reached through vaginal roots sir. Uh, can you tell one more space which cannot be reached by vaginally? Yes sir, yeah. pre-sacral space. Yes, correct. We cannot reach the pre-sacral mm -hmm. space through vaginal root. So, what is the significance of this pectineal ligament? Where we will use in this pectineal sir, ligament? Sir, one, uh, two surgeries we will be using this pectineal ligament, sir. One is fairly new surgery, pectopexy, for apical suspension in case of wall prolapses or uh, hysteropexies. Yes. Uh, what is the other surgery? Sir, our own birch call for suspension. When done abdominally and laparoscopically, yes. we will be using Cooper's ligament or pectineal ligaments. And next thing is, um, why we are scared of uh, this area? What do you worry about? Yes, sir. So, pectineal ligament, although it is fairly a vascular ligament, but many important vessels are nearby those nearby the pectineal ligament, sir. Superolaterally, there will be... Uh, inferior epigastric uh -huh. artery? Su uh -huh. Superolaterally, there will be inferior epigastric artery and sometimes a rare communication between inferior epigastric artery and internal obturator artery will be there that is corona mortis yes, corona and if mortis. we have pricked that then it will be a yes. as it is a mortis corona mm. mortis it will be a convert situation there will be a hemorrhage yes and so while performing pectopexy or birch call position we should be careful about uh, not to pierce or not to puncture this yes sir. so one more specific thing about this space is so, uh, to remember, whatever sutures we are taking or anything we are taking, it will be non-absorbable sutures, sir. So, pectopexy for colpo suspension and all, the space between the apex and the uh, pectineal ligament will be more. As we do for pre-sacral space also, we will be using a mesh yes. for this surgeries. And for birch also, we will be using non-absorbable sutures. Uh, thank you so much, Monica. You have explained it very well. The second space, uh, now we are going to discuss about uh, rectovaginal space and its significance. So, what are you going to say about it? Sir, so, rectovaginal space mostly we will be using for our posterior colporophy procedures. Yeah. So, we will be showing the space and uh, the Are you going to model? again show with the Mia yes, model? Yes, sir, Mia yeah. model. The last space we are talking about today is um, rectovaginal space or uh, Dinan Villiers face, uh, fascia. So, uh, Monica, please explain this also in the MIA model. Yes, sir. So, we have taken full, uh, we have removed some parts of MIA model for yes. this, sir. Bony pelvis we have yes, removed. Sir, yes, sir, bony pelvis we have removed. This is the rectum and this is the vagina and you can see the uterus also and here. And this is like from sagittal section side, like sideways yes. we are seeing the pelvis. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. So, this space between the vagina and the rectum is rectovaginal space. This has condensation of endopelvic fascia called Dinon villus fascia as yes. already sir said. We will be using this space sir for our posterior colporophy cases. Yes. The problem with this space sir, do, towards the lower one third, the space has high vascular uh, rectal plexus sir. Even rectocele repair also yes, we will do in this space. Yes. yes. And there will be a lot of uh, bleeding because of this uh, plexus of veins. Yes. Sir. Uh -huh. So, anything else you want to talk about this space? Yes, we can use this space also initially to go 
near this heterospinous ligament, ligament sir yes. if we Correct. dissect in the middle one third of the uh, posterior vaginal wall and separate the fascia uh, just laterally if we go into the space and then do a blunt dissection towards the uh, ischial spine and if we go Deep. towards the ischial spine and if we go posteriorly from the ischial spine we will be reaching the sacrospinous space sir. yes yeah okay thank you yes and the uh, last space is um, a pod a pouch of douglas or uterosacral space yes. uh, today that we are going to talk about uh, the other space which is uterosacral space or uh, pouch of douglas or pod so monica can you show the same on the mia model to, for our viewers sake Early, pod which is popularly known as pouch of douglas also it is also called uterosacral space why because uterosacral ligaments are there in this space laterally the space is bounded by uterosacral ligaments attaching the uterus to the sacrum this is the place where the uterosacral ligaments will come so in between the space is pouch of douglas and what are the boundaries of it in the yes, lateral sir. side anterior and posterior yes, what you sure. see anteriorly as you are seeing supravaginal part of the cervix yeah. forms the anterior boundary posterior boundary is formed by the sigmoid colon and laterally as we already said uterosacral ligaments will be forming the lateral boundary yeah. what is the significance of uh, this space in urogynecology yes sir in urogynecology we use this space for many surgeries for endoseal repairs yes. mainly sir mm -hmm. the surgeries are maskovitz repair mm -hmm. halbans repair my calls caldopasty and and other cases also sir for caldosensis Caldos colpotomy Caldo yes we we'll are using this space and uh, uh, do you have any problem with this space like while uh, doing any of these procedures what are the, what is the worry you have yes sir Yes, sir. We have mostly our ureters. Yes. Just pelvic part of the ureters will be just lying lateral to the uterosacral ligaments, sir. So we have to be very careful, and we can use this space for apical suspension also. Fairly new to a new procedure, a high uterosacral suspension. suspension. Yes. So we will be using these uterosacral ligaments only for high uterosacral Sus suspension. Correct. You have explained in detail, Monica. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think uh, I hope you all are uh, benefited by these nine spaces. Thank you very much. Thank you.